Hi there, my name is Jeremy Krug and I'd like to welcome you back to my chemistry channel. In this video we're going to be taking a look at a very special type of chemical compound. We're going to be making a brief foray into the world of acids. We're going to learn how to name acids and we're going to learn how to write chemical formulas for these acids as well. If you're new here, go ahead and take a look around. If you like what you see, consider subscribing. And if you learned something from this video, I would really appreciate it if you'd hit that thumbs up button. That really does help the channel. Now, as we talk about acids, let's take a look at three formulas of different acids. So I'm going to put these here on the screen. And one thing that you'll notice that these acids have in common is that they all have the element hydrogen in them, don't they? In each case, they start with H, hydrogen. There's hydrogen for this one, the second one, and of course the last one as well. Now, there's something else that they have in common. All acids that we're going to work with in this chemistry course uh, are going to have hydrogen in the formula, normally at the very beginning of the formula. All acids are going to produce these hydrogen ions whenever they're dissolved into water. Now, these three acids have something else in common as well. And that's a little bit less obvious. As you look at these three formulas here, they have anions there that end with IDE. So for example, in the first example, Cl is the chloride ion. And then over here we have F, which is the fluoride ion. And then over here we have CN, which is the cyanide ion. They all have anions that end with the IDE suffix. So in order to name these acids, I'm going to take off the IDE. I'm going to replace it with IC, ick, and then I'm going to put hydro, H-Y-D-R-O, at the front of that acid's name. So H followed by chloride becomes hydrochloric acid. Hydrogen followed by the fluoride ion becomes hydrofluoric acid. Hydrogen followed by the cyanide ion becomes hydrocyanic acid. As it turns out, all three of these are fairly important acids in our society. For example, hydrochloric acid is found in your stomach. That's stomach acid. Uh, it's also used for cleaning purposes. If you've ever done any bricklaying or know someone who has done bricklaying, they often use hydrochloric acid as a cleaning agent to remove any excess mortar. Hydrofluoric acid is uh, also used in art. Hydrofluoric acid actually eats through glass. And so we can use hydrofluoric acid for glass etching. You got to be very careful though and not get it on your skin because hydrofluoric acid not only eats glass, it also eats people. It actually can absorb through your skin and go through your bloodstream to your liver and cause liver damage. So you have to be very careful around hydrofluoric acid. And then hydrocyanic acid, when it bubbles out of the, the acid, uh, state there is uh, sometimes just called cyanide gas. If it's HCN as a gas, we call that uh, cyanide gas. And of course, that's very, very toxic. You don't want to, uh, to spend much time around that, do you? Now let's take a look at another series of three acids. And here we notice that they also start with the hydrogen atom. So that's something that they have in common. Something else that you might notice that they have in common is that they also end with oxygen. Now, these three acids are called oxyacids, O-X-Y, acids, oxyacids. And that's because these are acids that have the oxygen atom in there somewhere. So these are oxyacids. Now, there's something else that these three acids have in common, other than the fact that they have hydrogen in them and the fact that they're oxyacids. They have something else in common as well that may not be quite as obvious. If you look at the anions that produce these acids, they end with ate, the A-T-E suffix. So for example, N-O-3 is the nitrate ion, and C-L-O-3 is the chlorate ion, and P-O-4 is the phosphate ion. Well, in this case, to name these acids, we're going to remove the A-T-E, and we're going to replace that with I-C, with the ick 
suffix. We're not going to put a hydro on the front this time though. So this time hydrogen followed by nitrate becomes nitric acid. Very common in the laboratory. Hydrogen followed by chlorate becomes chloric acid. And hydrogen followed by phosphate becomes not phosphic acid, but phosphoric acid. For acids containing phosphorus and sulfur, we add those extra two letters. In the case of phosphorus, it's OR. In the case of sulfur, it's, it's UR to make the acid a little bit easier to pronounce, uh, supposedly. So we have these acids. Phosphoric acid, by the way, is found in a lot of colas. It's often found in Coca-Cola. It's found in other sodas sometimes. And uh, yeah, it is a, a fairly important acid found in uh, carbonated beverages, as you, as you can see. So we have that. Now let's try another series of three acids. I'll put these on the screen here. And once again, you can see that these are all acids. They start with hydrogen. They're all oxy acids as well. They have oxygen in there as well. But what else do they have in common? Can you tell? If you look at the anions, those anions end with the ite suffix, I-T-E. So NO2 is nitrite. CLO is hypochlorite. SO3 is sulfite. So in this case, if the anion that's in that acid ends with ite, we replace the ite with O-U-S, us. So for example, the hydrogen followed by nitrite becomes nitrous acid. The hydrogen followed by hypochlorite becomes hypochlorous acid. And the hydrogen followed by sulfite becomes, once again, not sulfus, but sulfurous acid. That's an acid that's often found in acid rain. Maybe you've heard of that. So here we have the way to name these different types of acids. Now let's try going in the other direction. Let's try writing the formulas for some acids. So we'll start with chlorous acid this time. Well, just so you know, when you write the formula of an acid, it's very similar to writing the formula for an ionic compound. We have to think of the charges in here as well. So since it's an acid, it starts with the hydrogen ion, doesn't it? Hydrogen has a positive one charge, so I'm going to write that down just like I were dealing with an ionic compound here. Now, chlorus, that O-U-S prefix, implies that the anion is chlorite isn't it? And chlorite is ClO2 with a negative one charge. So once again, we have to think to ourselves, do these charges cancel out or do we have to swap them? Well, plus one and minus one, they cancel out, don't they? So we're just going to scoot these together and that's the formula for chlorous acid, HClO2. Now let's try another one. Let's try oxalic acid. Now, once again, it's an acid, so it starts with hydrogen. We'll write that down here. Hydrogen has a positive one charge. And then oxalic, that I-C, that ic suffix, implies that the anion ends with eight, doesn't it? So we're talking about oxalate. Now, that's an anion that we don't use very often, but it is on the ion chart that is in the description down below if you'd like to download that. Oxalate is... C2O4 with a negative two charge. So now we have to think to ourselves, do the charges cancel out or do we swap them? Well, they don't cancel out, so we have to swap them. So when you scoot these two together, we swap the charges and there's the formula for oxalic acid, H2C2O4. So to summarize all this, here are the rules for naming acids. If the anion's name ends with IDE, then we have the stem with the ick on the end and hydro on the front. If it's a stem with eight, we just change the suffix to ick. And then if it ends with ite, we change it to us, O-U-S. So I hope you learned something about how to name acids, how to write the formulas for acids. If you did, please slam that like button. I would really appreciate that. And I hope to see you in the next video where we can learn some more chemistry together.